Hello and welcome to Pundit Nigeria Television. My name is Noye Odiri. This is a Focus Nigeria interview special and today we're going to be discussing issues affecting the nation and how we can come together, strategize to move the nation forward. I have a wonderful guest on the show today. He's a footballer, an entrepreneur and an ambassador. I am so pleased to have on the show with me Ambassador John Fashion. Thank you, Noye. Thank you <laughs> Thank so you much. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. on the show. I'm Thank really you. pleased. Thank you. First thing I'm going to ask you, okay, I mean, looking at your resume, you have done marvelous work um, in Nigeria and outside the country. Why are you in Nigeria right now? Why are you back home? You know, Nonye, I spent two decades in Europe playing professional football, presenting television shows, basically working hard. But at the end of the day, there's nowhere like home. Home is home. Definitely. To be appreciated by your own people, your own king, kin, your own family, everything. Oh, words can't express it. So it was time for me to come home. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you. Thank you. <laughs> OK, now, um, going through um, a lot of your stuff, yes, I was sniffing around your pictures. OK, yeah. <laughs> and archives. I saw a, yeah, your archives, yeah. I saw a picture of you with um, the, prime, the former Prime Minister of Great Britain. Yes. And that was, I thought that was beautiful. How did you meet her? You know, uh, the strong iron, the iron lady, Margaret Thatcher. I met her with my dear, shall I say, father, His Excellency Ibrahim Babangida, IBB. That was his first official uh, state visit to the UK, and I was very lucky that I was uh, invited along. And uh, there was five of us. So we went into uh, number 10, which is the, where the Prime Minister resides, and we met the First Lady, or should we say the Iron Lady, as she's <laughs> called. A wonderful lady, wonderful lady, but she's an Iron Lady. Tough. No, tough, no nonsense. Now, bringing this back home to Nigeria, um, Nigeria has had 13 years democratic rule right now. But people are saying we're not developing as fast as we should um, or as quickly as we should. What are the issues or what are the problems that you think Nigeria is facing right now? Wow, Nunya, do we have enough time to go through them all? I don't know, but we can try. Well, let me start by saying that the Nigeria that the British handed over to, our founding fathers, was a good country, great people. Our founding fathers had that input that the making of Nigeria, which was founded on social justice. But sadly, I believe that after the 1966 coup, that Nigeria was no more a structurally unsound nation, where ethnicity and religion are more important than merit. So now, even if you bring an angel to run the affairs of Nigeria, without changing that structure, it will be as if Jesus Christ said, you'll be putting new wine into an old skin. For a start, Nigeria is not a federal republic as such, but a Unitarian state with too much power concentrated at the center. And every ethnic group wants their son desperately in charge at the center. So of course, they want to have access to the national cake Talk about corruption or terrorism. You cannot use the law successfully to punish those who loot or covertly sponsor terrorism because when you do, it will be ethnicized until public get so confused they are unable to unravel the matter. We need true federalism for one. Now, Tell me how a state will even attempt to develop its own resources and be self-sufficient if that government of the state knows that at the end of the month they'll get a nice big fat check from oil proceeds. That money is not tied to their work of any of the citizens. So the state, so if that governor steals no one really raises an eyebrow or says anything because it was not their money in the first place. It's coming from government. So we have an artificial state that exists solely because of the federal subventions they get. Where else in the world do you have such an artificial system? And, and may I say, the other day, economists were complaining that our economy is growing at a record level. Yet poverty continues to exist in our society. The reason is because we have some parts of Nigeria whose population is booming, is increasing. 
This population is not being prepared to work. They are being told that the reason why they do not have enough is because they don't get enough from oil. So when they need more funds, instead of doing the right thing and thinking of how to develop their own resources, their response is, we need more money from government. Mr. President, give us more money. This is why even the areas like Lagos, River State, Aquaibom State are witnessing an enormous boom, but they're still seeing poverty. Elsewhere, some people think it's the duty of others to look after them, which is wrong. Each state has to be direct beneficiary of its own resources, like it is in any true federal system. Tax money from Lagos State should not be shared among the other 36 states. It's wrong. What incentive do those states now have to develop their own resources? Are you understanding? I'm, I'm understanding what you're saying and you're raising um, you valid, know, valid points here. So, in conclusion, the key to me is that we must have a sovereign national conference to fix Nigeria's structure. And I think there are many people out there who would agree with this. Okay, I'm just going to cut you there, John, because you've raised, you know, you've raised the very key issue. Um, the first thing I'm going to tackle is the, the issue of the Sovereign National Conference. Um, there's a lot of cry right now. People are saying we need to look at Nigeria's structure. We need to, you know, correct some things. And there are others are saying, no, Nigeria's structures are fine. What do you have to say to the critics? Well, let's be a little bit more precise and direct than I have okay. to be. When I read on the social media networks, people like El Rufai, he's my brother, but he's, <laughs> he's still, I've got to tell the truth as I okay, see it. Okay, you're courageous, you're naming names, go ahead. And, well, we have to. This is what we're not doing. We're not having the courage to name names. It's the right way. And his fellow travellers, they condemn the idea of a sovereign national conference. I just laugh, because these guys are false progressors. The El Rufai who says the government should dialogue with Boko Haram is the same El Rufai who doesn't want Nigerians to dialogue with each other. Does that make sense? Okay. These people are only interested in what benefits their political interests and not what benefits the nation. I'm sorry. Didn't the same El Rufai once condemn, condemn Buhari to Nigerians as being too old to rule? That was in 2010. Today, he's campaigning for the Buhari, who was too old to run in 2010, but now to run for 2015. <laughs> now, how can you take a man like that seriously? Someone who is benefiting from the present system. Of course, he wouldn't want the status to change. He doesn't want the status, cha status quo to change. Isn't El Rufai the fella who withdrew lands from the people, then turned around to give the same lands back to himself and his friends and family? I'm sorry. The same man who awarded lands to his wives and underage children. He invested in the system. Do you think he wants change? Well, I mean, John, you have raised a lot of controversial issues. Um, but one thing that I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask your opinion right now. The critics who say they don't need a sovereign national conference are saying what Nigeria needs to tackle or what the federal government needs to tackle is corruption and not the structure. Um, do you think that if we do have a sovereign national conference, it will reduce Nigeria's level of corruption? Thank you. Talk about corruption or terrorism. I've already said, but I'll say it again. You cannot use the law successfully to punish those who loot or covertly sponsor terrorism. Because when you do it, it'll be ethnicized until the public gets so confused they become dizzy and they're unable to unravel the matter. So, you know, we need a true federalism for one. Now tell me how a state will even attempt to develop its resources and be self-sufficient. You know, and I don't want to run the risk of repeating myself. But I think I've said enough on those parts. And I think, you know, anything you say in Nigeria is controversial. 
Whether you're talking about your brother, whether you're talking about the president, whether you're talking about whoever you're talking about, it's controversial. It's a controversial country. We must get used to that. Well, John, I'm so sorry that I have to stop you here. I mean, we could go on and on and on, but I definitely will definitely want to have you back on the show. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really welcome. enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, unfortunately, that's all we can take on this edition, but be sure to join us next time when we'll be discussing other key issues affecting the nation. Look us up on Twitter or Facebook and on YouTube as well. Send us your views and comments on what you think about the show and on any issue affecting Nigeria. Till we see you next episode, take care of yourself and have a lovely week.